guys can you see me Guys, can you see me now? I hope you are uh, able to watch me. Hi, Tuvia. Yes, okay. Great. And can you hear me properly or uh, is my voice a little bit uh, low or something like that? Profit. <laughs> okay, I kept it away. <laughs> I was going to drink. I was eating actually Tropicana, as you can see. Now everything seems to be perfect. My voice is also clear, everything is clear. So guys, uh, thanks for being there. Maybe in some time more people will join us. I came a little bit early today, I think. Maybe uh, one minute early or something. Shahid is also here. Okay, cool. So more, more people are joining us now. And that is a good sign. Harsha is also here. Good. <laughs> so <clears throat> okay thanks for coming to me uh, shivendra is also here so let's start some with some tactics before more people will join us so we will solve tactics for maybe 10 15 minutes okay And uh, then we will uh, start with our today's session. Today's session will also be interesting, I hope, because uh, personally, I like this uh, topic and uh, this topic actually means this theme which we are going to see helped me a lot in my own games also. So let's start with tactics and then we'll see. That's good, Harsha. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mantrala. <laughs> Thank you. I feel I, I have many pictures of my own, so I thought like maybe I should put my own pictures rather than putting someone else's pictures. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I like to chill. Okay, here uh, it is white to play and uh, D into C6 is suggested by new and uh, other people also. Okay, let's get started. We can just capture the piece here and that should be enough for us to win. Good. Okay, Tuve is going to say thank you for everyone, I think. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so we are now focus on the chess. Okay, we can do other things after some time also. Okay, here a4 and b3 absolutely right. We should play a4 and then we should go for b3 so that we can uh, attack this both the pieces. And uh, okay, so we should play a4 and then b3 and we should be able to win the piece in that case. Very good. Let's go to the next one. I'll, okay, here also if you go for this thing, undefended pieces and uh, then you will get this position very quickly. I hope that this is quite easy for you. Yeah, queen to the b7, first suggestion from Neo. My class buddies, I think uh, my class buddies means your name is Ajay, right? 
so it is it will be be, uh, better like if i call you by your name her she is says also saying queen b7 yes definitely we should play this move so that we will be attacking both the pieces and we will win the piece okay yes ajay right no what profile profi thing is yes yes i absolutely i will tell you what is profile axis in some time but first we will start start with easy tactics for 10 minutes that's our ritual we'll follow it okay okay here we have uh, two opinions we can play this move and give a check or we can capture with the queen which one will you choose i think capturing with the pawn is much better because then we will be attacking this undefended piece on b7 so we should yes yes to we are and uh, neev harsh every everybody is right about this thing and we should capture here okay let's go to the next one yep okay this is a clear cut example of pin there is a pin on this diagonal so we should uh, win because of this thing so how will you pin how will you win okay i'm waiting knight e4 definitely we should play knight to the e4 in this case attacking double thing and then obviously we will win the queen if he captures like that otherwise he will just lose the piece okay four more minutes of tactics solving and then we will be ready for our today's session <laughs> funny computer which computer is funny okay knight e5 is suggested by everyone because yes definitely we will be attacking two pieces and it will be a knight fall quite easy right now we must play c6 move so that uh, we will be again attacking his bishop and uh, then we will capture the piece definitely <laughs> yeah blundering the queen yeah here our queen is being attacked the pawn is also attacking the bishop so what to do here again i think the same move will work here in the previous position knight e5 worked i think in this position also knight e5 should work yes ajay uh, abhishek right the kid story with anay means abhishek right queen f1 is being suggested by you guys but i don't understand why to play queen f1 here we want to checkmate your opponent okay he will capture you will capture then king to the h2 after that what after that i don't knight into e1 okay guys tell me complete variation not just the one move because whatever you are going to tell me i am going to play that move it is our uh, combined effort not my only my opinion okay you are all suggesting knight into e5 so let's play knight into e5 and figure it out whether it is a good move or not if it's bad move then it is also okay for us let's see what is there so it is a bad move right so which move should we play i think the move which you suggested earlier the continuation you are not telling me the thing is that we can capture here we'll get two rooks and after that we can even play bishop into e5 yeah then knight into e5 works much better i think or first bishop into e5 also should work so we should just capture here and then now we have this bishop into e5 giving a check or we have knight into e5 also
both the moves are there so we need to choose wisely in this question which move we are going to play 94 i think knight into e5 much is much better in this case because we are attacking the queen as well as we are threatening knight to the f3 check and mate on the next move so i think is uh, enough of tactics let's start with our today's session means uh, the uh, today's topic and uh, so would you like to start with today's topic or do you want to solve more so just one minute uh, let me check okay fine i think we can put this thing and fine so yes start over as i can be able to stick into the stream with tactics okay fine yeah every day actually harsh i maybe you don't like this thing but every day we start with tactics for 10 minutes okay because i think like uh, tactics solving is very important for uh, everyone we should do it so you can uh, and i always recommend to everyone also before the games that uh, you should solve tactics easy tactics for 5 to 10 minutes it will help you to sharpen your brain and everything warm up for that thing yeah then maybe we can uh, okay maybe that's your choice <laughs> okay fine so uh, prophylaxis is something uh, which we need to understand like what is prophylaxis prophylaxis is basically means understanding your opponent's ideas his plans and taking our decisions accordingly means uh, in normal life prevention we can say like prevention means we can stop something right right in prophylaxis we stop some of your opponent's ideas but along the way we are not playing in a defensive way we also try to play in a active way so it is like active defense you can say but the thing is that we are paying more attention to your opponent's ideas because we will not allow him to carry out the plans which he wants to do in the current position so whenever your opponent is trying to do something on the any side of the board like king side or queen side or he wants to do something small thing and if it's possible for you to stop that idea then you should do it because whenever you play any game and if your opponent is not allowing you to execute the plan of action which you are uh, thinking about doing it or if you are trying to do something and if your opponent is not allowing you to do it then you get frustrated and in that frustration or you can say you know, like restlessness you take some decision which is not the best or you can say that that decision is not objectively the best in that current position and while doing it what you do is like okay when you are defending passively then also you try to stop your opponent's ideas but in profile axis you stop your opponent's idea but you also implement your own idea along the way okay that's very very important Tuve is a nine years old boy. Okay. <laughs> Tuve is nine years old boy, and he does all the things which uh, he does in the chat by his own. I never ask him to do anything. That's his choice. <laughs> So uh, and one more thing, like Aaron Nimzovich, who 
wrote one book that is my system in that my system he talked about prophylaxis in a very big like a deeper manner so for the people who want to learn more, more about the prophylaxis they should really study this book called as my system okay personally i studied that book uh, in my childhood also and uh, now also sometimes i revisit it whenever i feel like okay i need to learn something about it so you should do it okay so let's start with the uh, first game of around names observation try to understand what is prophylaxis okay so this is the first uh, sorry wait not this one i wanted to show different position first okay this this position i want to show yeah we will start with this position now okay so here if you look at the position black is on the move and uh, here in this position karl schulter is uh, white and aron nimzovich is black and they played this game in 1907 here white was previously white played king to the h2 and his idea was on the next move maybe to go for the f4 breakthrough at some point and nimzovich understood that okay and uh, he dimzoy thought okay my opponent wants to play f4 and he wants to open up the position on that side of the board so i should do something so this is like you need to understand what your opponent wants to do so once you understand what your opponent wants to do in this position then you need to devise a plan accordingly so my first question for you is like how will you stop f4 from your opponent what move will you play because his idea is very clear white wants to play knight to the g1 and then he wants to play f4 and he wants to open up because this rook will also come on f1 and once this f4 comes this pawn will come here then he can play e5 and this bishop will also be there in the game so slowly and gradually white pieces will open up so we need to stop it so what to do guys knight f4 is first suggestion which i got it okay fine okay knight f4 but if you play knight to the f4 in this position bishop h4 is another suggestion okay fine then but how are you like stopping this okay if you play knight to the f4 i think we can just play this move we'll play this move and then e5 will come and uh, this is a check is there and the bishop on f6 is also lost so knight f4 is definitely not a good move if you play bishop to the f4 that also doesn't uh, mean anything in this position because i can even play g3 strengthening the f4 square and next move i will play knight g1 and then i'll go for the f4 move so you are not doing anything related to the f4 breakthrough in this position there are many no this is uh, from nimzoich game nimzoich is black but i just suggested my system because in uh, my system he has uh, talked about uh, prophylaxis in a very deeper way because in just one and a half hour i cannot cover all the things in uh, all the things related to prophylaxis so i will uh, recommend you to read that book so that you will understand more of more more of prophylaxis okay okay surya ji bhosle is suggesting that knight h8 and g5 well that makes more sense if you play knight to the h8 in this position yes okay shri raj okay shri raj is suggesting knight to the h8 yes knight h8 is actually a good move anticipating that your opponent is going to play knight g1 and then he wanted to play f4 because here in this position even if white plays knight to the g1 we can play g5 <clears throat> and then we will be protecting the f4 
square more strongly with our two pawns and black now has so much control on the f4 that white cannot really play f4 okay he can go for the f4 only with the preparation like g3 but if he goes for the g3 then again he is slowing down and another thing is that now if f4 at any point comes then black has the option of opening up the position more and then he also has this kind of threats on the square but we can still control that uh, f4 by playing knight to the g6 okay now f4 is definitely not a good move because we can simply play g into f4 g into f4 and we have a nice move obviously black should not play this move if you play this move then also it is okay but i will suggest that not to play this move because again you cannot capture here because there are possibilities of playing e5 so but instead of capturing on f4 we can simply play knight to the h4 with the idea of playing at any point this f3 square is controlled the knight will not come in the game knight will not even come on the e2 square because knight f3 is there and another thing is that we will be playing rook to the g8 and we are threatening rook to the g2 in that case and as we have not captured on f4 we are not allowing these two bishops to come in the game so slowly and gradually white pieces are being cramped and black pieces are coming in the game so this is what we need to do we should stop our opponent's ideas and we should be able to implement our own ideas in the position okay so f4 is still not coming so here white played queen to the d1 and after queen to the d1 it's time for us to do something so ninjovich played bishop to the g7 maybe at some point he might go for the f5 breakthrough this in this position exactly it is not coming but maybe okay he is prepared now because bishop was not doing that great job on the f6 square but on g7 he will be protecting the h6 pawn also if g4 is somehow placed and f5 is in the air okay so here white played queen to the f3 now nimzovich understands that the position on the king side is a little bit like slowed down there is nothing really happening on the king side and maybe at some point white might be playing c4 b4 and he might try to play c5 so he understand that queen side activity might be there so he stops that idea also so what will you play to stop potential queen side activity from your opponent we need to always understand what our opponent might play here which move will you play now from black side g5 is uh, we have already played g5 b5 okay you want to play b5 okay fine hello kartik good evening but b5 actually is a possibility i'm not denying this thing but by playing b5 maybe your opponent might get a chance to play a4 in this position and uh, the activity which he wants to do on the queen side will not be stopped so the better idea is to play a5 because all he wants to just playing c4 will not help him because even if c4 comes he will not play c5 so immediately because b4 pawn should be there so the position will be slowed down okay so that's why in this position nimzovi decided to play a5 the knight on g1 is not doing good so schulter his opponent tried to play knight to the e2 he brought the knight in the game and now our bishop is not doing good on the d7 square so he plays bishop to the b5 black is just trying to keep the pieces on the active squares because this bishop on this diagonal was not doing good but now he puts the bishop on this diagonal slowly and gradually he is placing his pieces on the better squares on the previous move you also saw that the bishop on f6 was not doing good so he moved it back to the g7 square okay so now white played a4 he again came back then rook h1 was played okay now here white's idea is to play h4 at some point after playing king to the g2 h4 is in the air so so what to do in this position
Okay, guys. Maybe not king g2. Maybe we will play king g1 and. Uh, Today's topic is uh, profile axis, which was uh, the term or you can say the invention of Aaron Nimzovich. Okay, Harsh, thanks for joining us. Today's topic is little bit slow, okay? So guys, you need to have a lot of patience because profile axis is all about patience. Profile axis is all about understanding your opponent's ideas, his uh, plans, and accordingly taking your own decisions. Okay. So now, okay, I will tell you. Here, black played queen to the e8. First thing is that he is putting this bishop and a queen on this diagonal. Another thing is that at some point, even if h4, h5 come. He is creating one square for this knight to come on the e7 because as I mentioned earlier, if black gets the chance, he will be very happy to play f5 and open up the position on this side because his rook is there on the f8 square. So he is preparing in this position. Okay. <laughs> Queen f6 was possible but uh, black has another option. He played queen to the e8 for some uh, concrete reasons. I will tell you what is the reason. Now h4 is definitely prevented in this position. h4 cannot be played. But if you play h4 then you should understand what is really happening. His opponent did not understand that h4 will be a little bit. Uh... So can you find out a re like a good move in this position that h4 has been played by white. And what will black play to explode the weakness which is created by the h4 move? Where is the weakness now? We should understand this thing. Okay, g4 is suggested by Karthik. Uh, Ajay is also suggesting g4. Well, g4 is a move which uh, white can, uh, black can really play in this position. After that, white must play queen to the g2. I agree with you, but okay. G4. There is also one possibility which was there and which was actually the idea of playing queen to the e8. G4 is definitely a good move. I am not denying about it. Okay. But Nimjovich thought in a deeper way. When he played queen to the e8, his main idea was to bring the queen to the c8. I did not tell you this idea earlier because I wanted to wait for it to happen. Okay. <laughs> because there should be some suspense. So queen c8. The, now the thing is that here the bishop is coming on this square on g4 and we will be uh, winning the piece on e2 because there is no square like h into g5 is not possible because of bishop to the g4. And if queen goes here then we will capture here on this square. And uh, okay g into h6 will be there. White will be having some... Uh, attacking possibilities but I think that we have one extra piece and uh, black should be fine here in this position. So here h into g5 was not played. His opponent played bishop to the d3 supporting the knight on e2 and finally black played bishop to the g4 attacking the queen on f3. He went to the queen to the g2 and now he played g into h4. Okay. So white was the player who wanted to attack black's king. But in return what happened because Nimzovich has taken slow and steady steps that the queen to the e8, queen c8, his bishop is now active and this rook is also ready to come on the g file whenever it is possible for him to come there. And let's suppose if he captures here in this position what is happening? Obviously we will be very happy to play knight into h4 in this position and the queen will be also attacked. He is losing one pawn also and uh, it is a difficult position for white because even if we play this move, we will play bishop to the f6, next move we will play rook to the g8 and we will be putting lot of pressure on this queen and the king is also a little bit exposed in this case. Yes, definitely Karthik that is exactly the position. So here in this position, white did not play g into h4. 
white player f3 in this position. So now your h4 pawn is there. So Nimzovich thought like okay, his opponent wants to play g4 after some time. Why not play h3 and dislodge this queen from this square? And now queen to the f1 was played. And in this position, can you find out a brilliant move which Nimzovich has prepared since long? Okay, I'll give you some idea that we were talking about this move earlier also. Okay, okay, Puya, no problem. Thanks for joining again. Guys, tell me which move will you play? It's time for tactics now. It's time for tactics. F5 here. Yes, definitely Karthik, P and John, you are also right about this thing. That black should play F5 in this way. He should not be afraid of anything because it is the perfect position for playing F5 move in this. Yes, Ajay, you are also right. Because the reason that if you play F into G4, Yes, f into g4 if you play, then f into e4 will happen. And we will be opening up this rook which Nimzovich was planning since long. And this is the main idea. Like when you restrict your opponent, he will be very, very uncomfortable. Okay, it's like he wants to move, but you are not allowing him to move. And whenever you restrict someone, then that person becomes restless. And in that restlessness, usually people make mistakes. Okay, this is a psychological thing. Okay, so here white played queen into h3, but after e into d3, the game is almost over. The final trick white wanted to try, he played bishop into h6, thinking that maybe if bishop into h6 is played in this position, then maybe in this position white is going to win after one move. What is that one move which will win the game for white here if bishop into h6 is played? Can you tell me how will you win from white side? <laughs> you can just simply play king to the g1 here in this position and uh, then there will not be any thing which can support or stop this kind of ideas with queen into h6 even if you go back with this move we can simply capture here the g6 knight is also being hanging queen h7 is also one of the threats and black will be losing so obviously Nimzovich is not going to fall for this simple trick that is bishop into h6. So which move will you play so that you will stop all these kind of ideas? You should understand your opponent's idea. Once you understand your opponent's idea, then you can do something about it. And it should be profile axis is not defensive technique. Okay, profile axis is something which you play actively. Means you bring your own idea in the position and also you stop your opponent's idea wow karthik you are just uh, like a great move you found a very nice move here black should play rook to the h8 in this position and here if white plays bishop into g7 then obviously after king into g7 we will be winning the queen and even if he doesn't do anything, next move we will be playing king to the g8 and we will be capturing here on this square. And let's suppose he tries to play something like g5 in this position. Then we don't need to worry because we can simply capture the queen, king into h3 and we will capture the knight on e2. And you can see that this position is completely winning for black. Right? <laughs> so actually in the game after rook to the h8, the concluding take... Uh, here in this position white just resigned because he doesn't really have any resources to save the game okay so this was a very uh, nice game i will say in which nimzovich always stopped his opponent's ideas this is how nimzovich used to play so would you like to see one more game by nimzovich Okay, we will see one more game by Nimzovich now and try to understand what is profile axis according to his thought process. Okay. Okay, let's see Nimzovich game and this game was played uh, by Nimzovich long back obviously <laughs> in 1927. Okay, it was between uh, Ahus Kal and uh, Nimzovich was black in this position 
and here you should understand what is really happening. So I will give you some time to understand what white wants to do in this position and you in comment section let me know what do you think what white wants to do. Whatever you think just tell me it should not be like uh, the most accurate thing and then we will think what black can do. Okay, I, uh, as Nimzoish is black I will flip the board for you and now you think. Guys, not just one moves, not just one moves. I am asking about the plan. What do you think white wants to play in this position? And accordingly, you should uh, think. And what you want to do also, like let's suppose what happens. Sometimes you want to do something, but that idea is not working because of some of your opponent's uh, good moves. So if the idea is not working because of some reason, you should understand that reason and you should try to get rid of that reason. So here also black is trying to do something and white is preventing him. <laughs> okay, might b5 is suggested by someone. Okay, this is not something I am asking about the moves. Today's session is little bit different. We are talking about plans and ideas. We are not talking about moves today. Today we are not talking about moves anymore. Okay, so let, let's see white plans I think to play for the king side attack definitely yes h4 h5 or maybe and his bishop on b2 is also there yes this kind of answers I need what white wants to do in this position definitely white wants to create something on the king side and also the move which you suggested f into e5 might be possible in the future but if white white is going to play f into e5 then it will be very bad for him because we will be very happy to play knight to the e5 the pawn on e3 will will also be very weak so white is not going to play f into e5 in this position anymore queen queen king okay okay fine so these are the things which you suggested i agree with you and another thing is that I think white would like to open the position. Yes, he would like to open the position at any cost. Another thing that the black wanted to play something like knight to the c5. Let's suppose he plays this move. Then white has a very nice move that is f into e5. d into e5 if you play then d6 is a good move. And in this case after d6, c into d6, queen into d6, white will be getting lot of play in this position because queens, queen and the rook are both are in the game and everything is safe also from white side so here to stop this kind of idea from your opponent which is coming because black wants to play knight c5 here Nimzovich played a very nice move he played knight to the h5 now what is happening is like okay we are attacking on uh, f4 square that is there and uh, one more thing is that here if you play like this then obviously we can play knight into e5 and uh, black will be very happy to play in this position as the e3 pawn is still a weakness okay so here in this position another thing which uh, i can see is like another move it, let's suppose he doesn't capture there okay and if you play something like bishop to the e2 then we can play e into f4 in this position and after e into f4 Black has a very nice move. Can you find out a good move from black side? Okay guys, Chess Dudes is a channel which is uh, like new channel you can say and it is uh, created by two of my friends Sankal Gupta, who is an international master and also uh, I am Sammet Shete. So if you like, if if you want, you can uh, go watch watch their channel and uh, learn something from them also. <laughs> okay, Bishop H6 is suggested by someone here. Okay. 
okay there is a tactical uh, move also that uh, maybe it's in this position knight into f4 is also one of the possibilities which you can go for because uh, after this uh, black might get some kind of a chance to play in this position okay this is also one of the ways you can uh, go for although it is not compulsory you can play simple like knight to the c5 also in this position if you want to play slowly and gradually so the thing is that black is just waiting the thing is that black is just waiting he is not allowing white to open up the position by playing f into e5 okay so here he kind of forced white to play g3 and now once g3 is played you can see that this diagonal is now opened up because he doesn't want any kind of attacking possibilities here on the f4 square because as uh, ajay was also suggesting bishop h6 was also one of the moves in that position where we will be putting pressure on the f4 square so g3 was played by white and now it is the time for us to play knight to the c5 as this bishop is there white will not be encouraged to play f into e5 because after d into e5 there is no good move like d6 move because we can simply play c into d6 and there is no time for white to play queen into d6 because we will be happily playing this move and we will be winning the piece on f3 so definitely this idea which was working earlier is not working now so f into is not the f into e5 is not there and we have a very clear cut plan of playing a4 and a3 trying to dislodge like this pieces will be disturbed in that case okay so here white played bishop to the e2 my my question for you is like what will you play here which move will you play so that you will create your own counter play in this position black is on the move okay a5 yes karthik uh, you mean a4 right yes you need to play a4 in this position because you have uh, consolidated your position and it's time for us to play on the queen side because there is nothing happening in the center of the board by playing knight to the h5 we have given more support to this pawn and our bishop is also there on this diagonal yes we should play a4 in this position so that the okay what about b4 what will you play with before is there we should not stop with our pawn right we should not play something like passive move with our knight like something like knight d7 or knight e4 we should go with our pawn move a3 yes we should play a3 in this position and now the bishop on a1 looks very miserable in this position and now will you play uh, something like knight d7 or will you play knight e4 obviously we will play the knight in the center of the board with knight to the e4 and after knight into e4 f into e4 the knight is being attacked knight g4 is played and now it's time for us to open up the game as we have this nice pawn on the a3 square and if at any point these bishops are also exchanged if our queen comes on this diagonal then white will be in trouble in that case so here black plays e into f4 okay <laughs> okay here the bishop on a1 is hanging so bishop into g7 is forced and then queen into g7 and now we have several threats like queen to the a1 queen into a2 is there so white doesn't have any time to capture on the f4 square so he played queen to the d4 and now finally f3 came and you can say that okay black is having a great position black's position okay you are pawn up also and another thing is that the bishop is also being attacked so what do you think like black will be winning in this position or not i think black should win right okay the bishop is being attacked he played bishop to the f1 and after this move you can say that the rook on h1 is also blocked it is not coming in the game and the coordination between white pieces is completely broken in this position his only hope is to capture the pawn on e4 so what will he play in this position to stop that thing so which move will you play
we must support the pawn on e4, right? So how will you support the pawn on e4? Guys, I'm waiting for your answer. Knight to the f6 is suggested by you. Okay, we can play knight to the f6, but also the thing is that knight e6 is also one of the threats. Okay, after knight to the, the thing is that I don't want to block my diagonal of queen. So I don't want to play knight of 6 just now. And also knight e6 and after that I don't want to give up my exchange also. So I think we should move the rook on f8 in this case. So we should play. So your rook e8 makes more sense in this case, right? So we will uh, develop the bishop slowly and gradually. First of all get rid of everything. So here black uh, has played rook to the e8, white played bishop to the h3 because he wants to play on bishop to the e6 or knight to the e6. And now the move which uh, was suggested by Karthik earlier, black went to play bishop to the c8 because it's very important to control the e6 square. Okay. So here bishop into c8 was played, rook a into c8 was played and now white played b5 thinking that everything is blocked in this position. Now again in this position white black played a very nice move that is rook to the e5. Why is he playing this move is very clear. The rook, the rook on e5 will be very nicely placed plus we are attacking the knight on uh, e5, g5 sorry. If knight e6 is played we can simply play queen to the e7 and at some point whenever uh, it is possible for us we can attack this knight with knight to the g7 and we will exchange the piece. And once we exchange the knight on e6 which is very well placed in this position, we will be pawn up plus our pawn on f3 is a fast pawn. And you can say that after this uh, exchange which is going to happen or if white uh, doesn't exchange also then also we will be having red position. Black should be winning in that case. Okay, here black, white played king to the b1. And then which move will you play? Obviously we should play knight to the g7 in this position. And if white captures on g7 then obviously we can simply play king into g7. Next move we will play rook to the f8 and we will try to push our pawn here. So white did not want it to do those things. White played knight to the f4. Now tell me which move will you play? Yes Shahid you are right about that thing. There are several possibilities in this position. There is no only one move which is right. Okay. So there might be different ways to play in this position. G5 is suggested by uh, Abhishek. Well, G5 is also there. I will not deny this thing. Okay. You want to attack there. But I think uh, you don't even need to do anything there. You can. Uh, you can wait for your opponent. Here Nimzovic was a player who used to play very slow chess. Okay, He was not in any kind of hurry. He understood that okay in this position I am completely better and I don't need to create any thing in this position. Nowadays we know that we always want to do something. Wanting to do something is very very bad. Okay, Sometimes we need to learn to be still. Learning to be still is very important. To be still means you are doing something. Okay. It's not like you are not doing anything. Because you need to put some efforts to be still. And if you are like very calm and quiet and waiting for your opponent to take the decisions. Then uh, definitely your opponent needs to take decisions. And uh, most of the times the decisions are not comfortable. Because if you see from white side it is very difficult to find out the moves. And from black side we can just wait and watch for some time. Okay, so that's why Nimzovic decided to play queen to the d7 just waiting for his opponent. He is not doing anything much in this position. Okay, the very tempting move knight f5 was there with him. But okay, he is not playing it. He says like okay knight f5 is there with me all the time. I can play it after some time. So here white played h4 and now the g3 pawn is a weak. Then he played knight to the f5. Putting some pressure on the g3 as well as the queen on d4. So queen c3 was played and finally he captured the pawn on g3 also and we can say that uh, black is two pawns up. Okay, the pawn on a3 will be falling but 
we doesn't really care about the a3 pawn because this pawn will not win any movement so but our pawn on f3 is very very strong so he played rook h g1 which was being attacked and it's time for us to exchange the knight on f4 so he played knight to the h5 trying to exchange the knight on f4 he played knight to the g knight to the e6 so which we will you play here in this position what do you think black should play something in this position which should be very easy the thing is that the knight on e6 is very annoying so we should just play knight to the g7 rerouting our knight to the f5 square and okay he played yeah knight to the g7 and he played knight to the d4 and finally uh, black played rook to the f8 and in this position which is very cramped and everything and two pawns down also white just resigned because knight f5 is coming on the next move the pawn on h4 will be attacked the pawn on e3 will also be attacked and uh, there is nothing like uh, very concrete in this position which uh, white will be happy to continue so you can say that slowly and gradually how he played it all started with this plan see nimzovich wanted to play knight to the c5 but opponent was threatening f into e5 and once you understand your opponent's threat then you can do something about it so the knight to the h5 move was to stop your opponent's idea because knight c5 was the idea of nimzovich but it was not working out properly so we should understand if some of your ideas are not working out we should find out the reason and we should think like okay this is the reason then i should do something about it and that is exactly nimzovich did in this game he played knight to the h5 and now e5 is over protected and then only he went for the knight c5 and then he played a4 a5 all those moves with the small steps which he took for the positional chess is very very nice okay so did you understand these things from this uh, i hope you are understanding what is profile axis profile axis is all about understanding your opponent's idea it's like when you are playing the game you should put yourself in your opponent's shoes they say and then think okay he is going to play like this what he wants to do and like this it's very very good perspective you will understand chess also much better in that way and you will play in a much better way if you understand your opponent's thought process and you will not fall for any simple or tricky traps which your opponent is putting on you okay i hope you understood <laughs> okay one more game by nimzovich now would you like to see one more game by nimzovich okay i hope you would like to see one more game by nimzovich okay fine guys i know the topics which i am selecting are little bit slow they are not like a sack sack boom boom mate or something like that it is a little little bit slow but if you learn these things then it will it will it will be very helpful for your game okay this is how you should play all the top players they don't always sacrifice they implement small small plans they understand their opponent's plans and accordingly they take their decisions it's very important quality which you need to possess that is called as being a matured player okay okay this is the position on the board now and uh, nimzovich is black once again and uh, you need to understand what white wants to do in this position so i will give you some time to think about the position and understand that what white wants to do and accordingly we will take the decision i am not asking you for the move i am asking you for the plan of action from white side what he wants to do try to understand this thing don't rush okay no need to rush think about it calmly i'll give you one minute we have a lot of time maybe two minutes also you can take and then tell me okay
okay guys you are very quick white wants to play e5 how on earth white can play e5 i don't understand you need to develop patience guys ajay you need to develop patience patience is the key we need to have patience if you want to play good games then you to you need to have patience okay yeah d5 that is not a plan that is just a move i am asking about the plan unless and until you will and first of all white will not be very happy to play d5 move because if he plays d5 then tell me how will he take this uh, bishop out he is hoping that at some point black will be playing c into d4 c into d4 and his position will be opened up as in this position white is having two bishops white is hoping for the position to open up he will not block the position at any cost okay shahid has come up with something shahid has come up with something he is saying like white plan is to play bishop a3 knight d2 and queen c2 okay but uh, okay okay if you want to play bishop to the bishop to the a3 but uh, the pawn on c5 is very well protected by two pawns so okay that is there and you want to play knight to the d2 putting pressure on this square and uh, queen to the c2 okay another thing is karthik is suggesting white bishop on c1 and the knight on b3 are not well placed okay good point and he needs to improve those pieces he can try for king h1 and g4 plan okay very good good that is a good plan good thinking like you are understanding what your opponent wants to do or what he would like to do good the kid story with anai says like white wants to keep single or isolated pawns on the e file and then attack okay then ajay again says king side attack and central control p and john is saying white has double bishop so he wants to open up so black should stop that and exchange one pair okay mayur has joined thank you mayur okay guys you are uh, some of your things are right okay and uh, your thought process also i am liking that you are thinking this is very important we we must think about our opponent's ideas and as uh, you have already mentioned that white needs to open up the position or he needs to try to do something about his bishops and he needs to play maybe something like uh, king side attack g4 or something because his pawn is there on f4 so he would like to play g4 at some point so the thing is that when you understand that your opponent wants to play on the king side as the center is closed right when the center is closed already anybody would like to expand on the flanks it can be queen side it can be king side and whoever is the first person to expand usually gets the advantage so nimjo it understood that g4 is the possibility which is coming on the board so now once you understand your opponent's idea you need to find out a way to stop it so how will you stop g4 which move will you play to stop g4 in this position because obviously g4 is not just a move g4 is a plan white wants to expand on the king side that is his plan and we need to stop that plan and he starts with yes ajay you are right about this thing queen d7 is actually a good move because now we are controlling the g4 square with this just one move we are stopping g4 okay no 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 you should not break in the center why your opponent has not even started the attack once the attack is already in the go at that time you should break in the center so in this position if you are going for the d5 move which looks a very premature to me the thing is that after d d5 the thing is that the bishop which was not doing anything on c1 suddenly it will be having some job to do okay because until now the pawn on c5 was uh, very firmly controlled 
or you can say supported by two pawns, the pawn on d6 and b6. But now we, we will be seeing that after d into c5, b into c5, white can even capture knight into c5. The pawn is being also like captured and okay, if you play something like d into c4, then also bishop into c4 and c. White's all the problems have vanished in this game and he doesn't need to worry. His bishop on c1 is also going to come in the game very soon. The c5 pawn is also there and white will be very happy to play in this position. So don't help your opponent. Okay, don't help your opponent. Okay, understood? So here in this position, queen d7 is played to stop the g4 move. So here obviously white is not going to stop in this position. He will play h3 and he will again try to play g4 in this position. Yeah, this game is from the Nimzo Indian opening because Nimzo which was the player who uh, popular, popularized that opening. Okay. <laughs> So here white means a white player wants to play g4 and now he is going to play g4 but Nimzovich understood that okay my opponent wants to play g4 let him play g4 but I will be well prepared if he is going to do that. So for that reason he played knight to the e7 in this position. He plays knight to the e7 and now here in this position if white plays g4 okay this is a little bit premature because we can play h5 putting pressure on the g4 pawn and if g5 is played we can see that the queen is there on this diagonal which is free another thing is that the knight is coming on the f5 square and by forcing your opponent to play g5 the attack is also stopped the position didn't open up and the thing is that it is white who is under pressure now because the queen is coming the knight is also coming so it's very difficult position for him if he plays g4 and after knight to the h7, obviously in this position, I will prefer this position playing from the black side. Okay. Because still the bishop's problem is not solved. Okay. You can capture the pawn on h5 if you want to capture. But then I will play queen into h3 and uh, the game will continue. But I have more squares than my opponent. I have knight f5. I can even play g6. Then king g7. The rook will come onto the h8 square. And black will be the one who will be in the driving seat in this case. Okay, so g4 is definitely not that good right now in this position. So white did not go for g4. He played queen to the e1. And now which move will you play? Now g4 is coming. Okay, <laughs> because after g4 if white plays g4, if you play h5, we can play queen g3 and we'll, uh, we will be very happy to play in that position. We have enough supporter also and you can even play. The queen is also coming on h4. So now we, need, we should stop g4 now. So which move will you play here? Obviously we, we must play h5 in this position to stop the g4 move. Yeah h5 should be played in this position. And now the king side expansion which was going to happen has been stopped just by playing 2-3 moves queen d7, knight e7 and h5. White played bishop to the d2 in this position and here here Nimzovich thought that okay this is this is like a very nice position here Nimzovich thought that okay my opponent might be at some point will be very happy to play king to the h2 rook g1 and g4 okay maybe and he wanted to stop this thing and he want to play h4 in this position but f h4 is not coming in this position and because the queen is sitting on the e1 square he will be very like he will just capture the h4 pawn. So he wanted to prepare the h4 because he understood that once the king side is blocked, maybe in that case he will start his own activity on the other side of the board. So to play h4, he started with a plan of action. So what might be the plan of action? How did he play h4 in this position in the future? This, that is his idea. He at least prepared for it. Okay, It did not happen on the board. But he prepared for it. So how will you prepare for the h4 move? Which move will you play? Okay, Ajay is suggesting knight to the f5 in this position. But if you play knight to the f5, then I will play just g4. My idea will be there. I will play g4 in this position. I don't want white to play g4. 
okay knight g6 you are suggesting but still still okay knight here you can definitely play this move i am not uh, denying this thing maybe here g4 is a possibility for or we can try start with the uh, f5 move stopping this both the pieces in their tracks and then because the pawn on f5 is supported by the rook so you cannot really attacking this the knight e7 will come and then i will play g4 and white whatever he wanted to do is happening on the board okay so i feel like black is little bit uncomfortable in this position if you allow this thing to happen on the board so we need to anticipate what our opponent might be playing in that case so we should stop it okay so knight g6 or knight f5 is not that helpful for us okay ajay has come up with a nice move yes definitely we should play queen to the f5 with the idea of playing queen h7 and then we will playing h4 nimzovich was a very clever person he did not allow f5 he did not allow g4 and now he himself is trying to play queen h7 and h4 okay <laughs> completely binding completely understanding what his opponent wants to do he is just tying like tying down his opponent okay another idea was to play king to the h2 with the idea of rook g1 and g4 okay now obviously nimzovic played queen to the h7 because he wants to play h4 in this position there is no time for rook to the g1 because then black will be playing h4 and uh, even if you play this move and then we will just capture h into g3 and okay after queen into g3 or rook into g3 knight will come on the f5 square and black will be very happy to play in this position okay so rook g1 is not going to happen so here white decided to play a4 he wants to expand on the queen side if it's possible but now it's time for us to do some activity on the king side and nimzovich was okay h4 here is definitely a good move which uh, nimzovic should have maybe played but he had some different plans now what he did he played knight to the f5 in this position not fearing obviously g4 is a big blunder now because we will be just playing h into g4 because queen is there on this file and the king is sitting on the h2 square so the g4 is forever blocked g4 is not going to come on the board right <laughs> Yeah, Karthik, this is a very nice sequence of moves. So he played now h4 and knight g3 is one of the threats in the position. Or maybe if the if the any bad move is played in this position, then knight g4 is also one of the moves because h into g3, h into g3, king might go here and then we will play g3 and then queen h2 will lead to a check and mate. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's suppose a5 is played in this position, then also even if he plays like that we don't need to worry about our queen side we can simply play bishop e6 supporting the rook on a8 and the game will go on okay and another idea which i told you let's suppose if you pass on the move and then we we might get a chance to play knight g4 and then h into g4 h into g4 king to the g1 and g3 and suddenly we have this uh, queen to the h2 check and mate is also there so white needs to be very careful in this position so understand initially white wanted to have some kind of attacking possibility on the king side and it is now black who is threatening check and mate so it is <laughs> this is what profile axis is profile axis is not about defense it's about being active but being active with the uh, like with the intention or you can say with the help of like your imagination you are stopping your opponent's ideas also and you are being active by yourself okay So g3 was played and here uh, Nimzovic just played a5 stopping all the ideas of his opponent on the queen side. Now he has stopped on the king side also, he has stopped on the queen side also. So now it's time to continue the game. I'll just tell you what happened because the main phase is now over. Okay. <laughs> so rook to the g1 was played, then knight to the h6, bishop to the f1, bishop to the d7 was played, attacking the weak pawn on the a4 square then bishop to the c1 white is completely blocked in his own camp here all the pawns are there eight pawns are there but white pieces are not well coordinated in this case so rook c8 was played giving more uh, support to this pawn on uh, c5 
and also the thing is that we are even threatening something like uh, this capture here or we are even threatening to play d5 because black is ready to open up the position now because he has more active pieces because it is said that when you have more active pieces then only you should open up the position and the player who is having more active pieces will definitely get the benefit if he is uh, the one who is opening up okay so d5 was played by white he blocked everything and now Nimzovic played a very nice move what will you play to open up the position now how will you plan for it as everything is blocked there is only one chance that you can open up where is that chance can you tell me obviously here the chance is to play on the king side so Nimzovic played king to the h8 with the idea of playing rook to the g8 and then he will playing g5 okay he played knight to the d2 rook to the g8 and then bishop to the g2 and now it's our time it's Nimzovic time to open up the poem so he played g5 then knight f1 white is also trying to protect everything okay but now it's okay he is playing like that it's our time to build up more pressure he he's going for rook g7 now with the idea of rook c g8 all the pieces will be will be there on the king side just look at the game what happens rook a2 was played the knight f5 came bishop to the h1 then rook also joined in the game queen to the d1 and now g into f4 e into f4 and now black played a very nice move he played bishop to the c8 maybe if at one point he might get a chance he will play bishop to the a6 and the pawn on c4 will be lost okay queen to the b3 and now bishop to the a6 suddenly the weakness which was there in uh, white's camp Nimzovich is going after the, that weakness so rook e2 was played knight h4 again a good move okay <laughs> then rook to the e3 then bishop to the c8 then queen to the c2 then finally bishop into h3 a sacrifice came in the game and the game got over because obviously here king h3 is not a good move because we have queen f5 check king here and knight g4 check king h3 then knight to the f2 king to the h2 and queen h3 is a check and mate so you can see with all the pieces if the position gets opened up then obviously we will be winning so here bishop into e4 was played but it's almost over now i'll just uh, finish off the game now and after h4 the position is more opened up and uh, he played queen h3 knight e3 knight h4 the g2 rook is also hanging king f1 and with the rook to the e8 white just resigned <laughs> okay so i went through the last part more quickly because that was not the topic of today because it is all about tactics and I just talked about till the moment when everything was stopped, all the black side, white side idea were stopped and white was under pressure also and black just gathered his pieces. We know this thing. Since first session, I'm telling you, if you are going for that attack, go with all your pieces, then only your attack will be successful. So, but before that, if your opponent is trying to do something, stop it. Okay, guys, stop it. Okay, I hope uh, you like this game also. So, did you like this game? Okay, fine. I hope you, you are liking the games which I am showing you today. Okay, fine. So, what we will do, we will see one more example. Okay, one more example by Alekhain's game. Alexander Alekhain, the world chess champion. We will look at his game now. And uh, enough of Nimzovich game. Now it's time to understand profile axis from the lens of Alekhain. Okay, so. <laughs> Let's look at Ali Khan's game one more time and just give me a second. Okay. Okay, this is the position. Ali Khan is black in this position. Okay. And here, if you can see, black already has this uh, 
beautiful structure on this side of the board okay but white is also having some kind of attacking possibilities on the king side and this rook is also there which is coming on the g3 square putting something on or h3 square if it's possible but g3 is coming for sure there's more than previous one by this need to think read opponent's brain which is helpful in job also yeah abhishek it's very important you need to understand your opponents we need to understand other person more you understand the other person you will understand what you should be doing it's very important to understand your opponent or whoever it is unless and until you understand that thing you will not understand what you should be doing exactly in the position that is the main point okay okay ajay see you okay guys we will uh, look at this game and uh, then we will stop the session okay so Okay, Alekhine's opponent was Alexander Flamberg and they played this game in Dresden in 1914. Okay, and it was a uh, quite good game. So once you understand the, what your opponent is trying to do in this position, he wants to create his own counter play or you, his attack on the king side. So we need to do something in this position. Yeah, my intern is little bit better you can say. <laughs> 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 and the electricity is there that is the main thing sorry guys <laughs> but uh, i am having cold a little bit cold which is not going away Okay, fine. So uh, once you understand what your opponent wants to do in this position, then you can take right majors. So Alekhain decided to play f5. Obviously, he understood what his opponent wants to do. He played f5. This bishop is now being halted, right? Bishop is not coming in the game. And if white plays e into f6 in this position, obviously, then after bishop into f6, the pawn on d4 will be very, very weak. And the bishop is also safe because the knight is there. And it will be black who will be having more advantage on the king side. Okay. Because he has more pieces in this case. So after f5, white played knight to the f1. Then he played very slowly. Rook to the f7. Yes, Mayur, uh, I, I will uh, think about Kada now. Definitely. Rook f7. And uh, thank you very much, Mayur. You always suggest me to do something about Kada. Now I am at home or maybe I will uh, prepare for it. Definitely. <laughs> so here rook to the g3 was played by white and here knight g6 with the idea of maybe if, if it's possible because basically the knight was uh, being attacked so he went back and also at some point we are also going to play bishop to the h4 so here white played f4 but by playing f4 e5 and d4 this pawn structure is there the thing is that everything is blocked and whenever the position is blocked the player with the two bishops, especially whose bishops are not active, will feel very uncomfortable in that position. Okay. And once the position is blocked in the center of the board, once the attack which your opponent was anticipating or he wanted to do on the king side is stopped, where you should start your own activity, especially in this position, can you tell me what will you play? Which move will you play? How will you start your own activity? Okay, guys, I think I make it very simple for you to guess the move. I just tell you everything and you just guess the move. <laughs> Can you guess the move? Okay, are you going to tell me or not? This is not that much difficult. It's it should not be like just like I am only talking, you're not even talking, or you're not even chatting.
bishop h4 and kick the rook away okay bishop h4 is something which you can always but this rook is not doing anything why to kick that bishop the rook away from that square or bishop is needed on the queen side we don't need to go here okay we don't need to go here all we need to do is like okay we have pawn majority on the queen side as i mentioned earlier on the first move we should take care of that thing we should push our pawns because everything is blocked on the king side everything is blocked in the center so we should play on the queen side and that's what alekhine did once he settled down his position now he activated his pieces so he played b4 knight to the d2 he brought his queen also on the queen side queen b6 then knight f3 now it's time to bring the bishop also on the other side of the board he played bishop to the d7 and now he is even threatening a4 b3 in this position everything is quite going great so knight g5 was played okay the knight is trying to jump around here and there so alekhine just stopped everything and he played bishop into g5 rook into g5 and now a4 suddenly you can see the two bishops are not that much worth like in this position they are very very cramped they are not having any great job in this position king h1 was played and now it's time to bring our knight in the game he played knight to the e7 maybe at some point the knight will be jumping over to the c6 square and b4 square if the position permits him white tries to attack with all his might he plays queen to the h5 but nothing is going to happen in this position white just played b3 attacking the bishop after a into b3 c into b3 bishop d3 was played and now it's time to take the breakthrough because this rooks rook and queen are just sitting there on the king side they are not going to do anything to you you just need to break through on the queen side and you will win the game so which breakthrough will you take here can you tell me yes a7 should be a3 a3 should be played by black that's what he did and white played rook into a3 rook into a3 and b into a3 black played b2 in this position now b1 is uh, one of the queen which is happening white played queen to the d1 and now it's trying to bring the rook on f7 in the game he played rook f8 with the threat of rook c8 or rook a8 and it is coming in the game so he played rook to the g7 but now rook to the a8 the idea is quite clear we want to capture the pawn on a3 in this position he played bishop to the b1 rook to the a3 and now bishop g1 this is also attacked we are not going to capture the rook on g3 alekhine played rook to the a1 in this position because now bishop is also pinned and there are other possibilities also we are going to play bishop to the a4 kicking this queen away from the square and we are going to play bishop to the c2 also so he played rook to the c2 c3 covering the this square but that did not stop bishop to the a4 queen to the d3 and now bishop to the b5 queen went to the square and now he played the final move tie this queen to the a6 the idea is very clear we are going to play bishop to the a uh, c4 and then bishop to the a2 is also coming and we are supporting everything on this uh, side also and there is also one of the possibility rook into b1 let's suppose h3 is played we can play rook into b1 queen into b1 and sorry not there queen a1 will come and the queen is not going to have any supporters and black should be winning in that case so once you stop your opponent's ideas then you can slowly and gradually open up the position you can slowly and gradually carry out your own plan so this is all about prophylaxis prophylaxis is means active defense it is not passive okay prophylaxis is not defense is it a defense but it is not passive it is active defense okay So I hope you understood what is profile axis at least a little bit. I just tried to explain, but uh, I, as I suggested earlier, if you really want to learn what is profile axis, do learn learn it from Nimzovich from his book My System. Okay. So with this good note, we will uh, end our session. Do spread my channel and. Uh, whenever you feel like you can always uh, donate also to me my links are there in the description and uh, we will meet once again with something new topic till then take care and thank you very much okay
yes my your profile access nice especially when we get a chance to use it correctly yes definitely understanding is very important when you are going profile access is a deeper thing okay <laughs> yes yes see you then guys thank you for watching my video always coming in the stream although we are very few people always there but i feel good that you are still there <laughs> at some day it will grow some day it will grow <laughs> the family is growing okay thank you very much see you then